What is up everybody, it's your boy Gloria C. Today's video, I'm going to show you guys tips and tricks how to improve your mechanic skills in Escape from Tarkov and how to get better at PvP. This video is not for the fresh beginners, it's more like for the majority of the community who has some kind of experience in PvP. And I'm going to show you guys all the important mechanics in PvP as well. So it's going to be kind of a base, it's all up to you how you want to implement it in your raids and how you want to use the tips and tricks that I'm going to show you today in your games. Let's get into it. First clip is about checking your surroundings and not tunnel vision. As you guys can see, I see a guy towards the kitchen. I'm pushing straight towards him without really being careful about my surroundings. And when I do, it's too late. This is a typical mistake a lot of players are doing when they're pushing a guy. Because I didn't check my surroundings, I would have been dead as soon as I came into the kitchen because of the player who was holding the angle. The next clip is about wide peeking a corner without any information, without knowing how many enemies there is. As you can see in this situation, I peek two guys at once, putting me in a disadvantage because it's one crosshair against two. So what you rather want to do in this situation, you want to gather some information and also narrow the enemy's field of view. So what you want to do is peeking them one by one, putting them in a disadvantage and have the upper hand like the way you see I do in this video right here. Taking the fight one by one will make the odds a lot more even in this situation, as you can see. As I approach the kitchen, I gather information on the enemy on the stairs to my right. I jump across to gather all the information I need to approach the fight, such as is there more than one player? What angle is the enemy holding? Etc. As I get in the right position, I fake push the enemy so I can catch the enemy off guard, which worked in this situation. A lot of players like to hold angles and not making the move. This bait almost works every time unless the enemy don't really want to fight. The same bait works in other situations as well, such as being the one who's getting pushed. This time you're stuck in a room and you need to catch the enemy off guard because you have the disadvantage. Make the enemy peek while you're holding the corner gives you a huge advantage. Next up we have the heal cancel mechanic where you bait heal yourself so the enemy thinks you're healing and pushes you because of the audio still makes it sound like you're healing. The way you do it is by pressing 4 in my case and then press left or right on your mouse to cancel the healing. While the enemy pushes you, you already have your gun in your hand which will catch your enemy off guard and leading into an easy kill because the enemy still thinks you're still healing. Up next, we have a mechanic where you use your gun as a bait and make your enemy think you're about to peek the corner. And this will make players, especially the nervous ones, pre-fire the corner without causing you any damage. Doing this multiple times forces your enemy to reload and gives you time to push up close and secure a kill. Another really important mechanic is by being unpredictable. Making your enemy think you're going to make a play which is well known in the situation and position you're in, but you're doing a completely different one, which baits the enemy into a counter reaction to the original bait of play while he's running into your trap. Since there's endless way for this mechanic to be applied, you can be creative with this and play off your experience. Another example that I use often on stream is to bait the enemy with the sound of different floorings such as in Resort on Shoreline. You take a quick step onto wood to make your enemy think you'll take a certain path, but in reality, you change your direction straight away and take a different path, your enemy will most likely not be able to react to the different audio in the time, giving you a moment of surprise. Using your nade on a 1v1 close combat is always a bad idea. As you can see in the clip, the animation of pulling up the nade gives the experienced player a time window in that you cannot react to his push, so avoid using nades in close quarter combat in situations like this. The way you want to use your nade is by using it to make the enemy move from the position they're heart peeking so you can make a play out of it. As you can see in the clip, my nade forces the enemy to move back into the room while I'm covering my audio with the explosion and it gives me enough time to be able to push up close to the enemy to catch him off guard. A lot of people are asking me, how do I know where my nades are going? Well, let me explain. It's not that simple. There's a lot of variables such as your strength, what nade you're using, and if you're standing still or moving. But you can use the tip of your pointer finger as a rough guide to where your nade is going. Let's talk about audio in Tarkov. So basically, we all know directional audio, especially vertical audio, 
doesn't work properly while being inside of a building. So let's break it down. As you can see in the clip, we hear someone run, but we don't have the direction where the audio is coming from. As we all experience, we can always hear layers on the upper level, but due to the audio layers in the game, the audio on the lower levels is not picked up clearly. So in the video, I'm standing on the second floor while someone is running below me. Without proning, I'm unclear of the direction of the vertical audio. After going prone, you can clearly hear someone below me. So if you're in a situation where you aren't clear about where you're getting the audio from, proning will always help. Another mechanic is worth mentioning is, if you're inside of a building and you aren't on the first floor, you won't be able to get the audio around the building unless you go outside to the balcony or jump into the window. Despite all the issues with the vertical audio, you can always use it for your advantage. As the following clip shows how to cover up your next move with the explosion of the nade and then use the vertical audio to approach the enemies without them being able to hear you. In a gunfight, it's important that you always think about possible options for both yourself and the opponent. Getting stuck in a situation without being able to fall back is always a disadvantage. Because then you're forced to play your enemy's game. And this will decide if you're able to turn the fight into your favor or not. The importance of the right shoulder peak and the left shoulder peak. Since our gun is on our right shoulder, our field of view is slightly to the right, so we expose much less of our body when peeking a corner with the right shoulder. The difference is visible in this clip. As you can see, peeking with the left shoulder will expose almost your entire upper body compared to the right shoulder peak. Let's talk about inertia and how to build up momentum while being in a fight. As you can see in the clip, I use my momentum to get the info, even though one of the corners are small. So by running into the wall gets me the momentum speed enough to swing inside, catching the enemy off guard. In a situation where you're forced to peek with the left shoulder peek, I would highly recommend swinging out with the inertia momentum as shown in the clip. Running in a circle will build up the momentum speed to be able to swing wide and off angle of the enemy's crosshair. The next shown clip, I want to talk about how to ignore ergo on your gun. Putting your gun into ADS out of the sprint will make the ADS almost instant. This is a mechanic you want to have in your mind while building low ergo guns. This only applies to close quarter combat situations. While fighting players, make sure to remember this. Another important movement technique is the bunny hopping, also known from games like Cisco. Its purpose is to increase the speed and distance of jumps. You can bunny hop by jumping off your PMC's right leg and in order to do so, Start counting your steps after you start sprinting and jump on the fourth step. This counting technique is a beginner technique while experienced players can pull this off by muscle memory and bunny hopping right away and continuously without taking steps in between. In the following clip, you can see the difference between running across a door or bunny hopping across to gather information. Next clip shows the importance not to take fights while being overweight and why you want to drop your backpack every time you get into a fight. Dropping your backpack make you less heavy, and less heavy you are, less inertia will kick in while peeking corners or gather information. A general well-known mechanic is crosshair placement. In this video, I'm not going to go into details because this mechanic applies to basically every FPS games, and there is already very good and detailed guides out there. In short, Always make sure have your crosshair placed on head level of your enemy while peeking corners and while getting pushed. Alright guys, that was it for this uh, this video. I hope you guys enjoyed today's YouTube guide. Let me know what you learned. Let me know what you think you're going to use in your future raids. And what do you think is was useful? And if you have something new, if you have anything you want me to cover up, any YouTube videos, any, any YouTube guides you want to watch, let me know in the comment section and I'll take a look at it and make a YouTube guide out of it. So, hope to see you guys on the next one. Take care. By the way, remember to hit the like, remember to follow the channel, and remember to hit the notification bell. I love you.